Chapter 261 They were both in the same world. Dexter was stabbed by the resentment in her eyes. He was speechless for a long time. When could he let her go completely? He had asked himself this question and had an answer, but it was shattered in front of her. He could never let go of her. Seeing that Dexter did not answer, and did not want to be in a deadlock with him in this place, Eva brushed past him. She had already felt that the raindrops were completely on her. She was going back to her room now. Dexter clearly heard the cold snort before Eva left. Looking at her angry back and awkward attitude, although it was inexplicable, he still felt that it was very cute. Eva's footsteps were very fast, so before the storm came, she had already returned to the living room. Dexter hesitated so when he came in, his whole body was wet, but his footsteps were still elegant. He clearly looked very defeated on others, but the raindrops dripping from his hair was particularly sexy. What are you waiting for? It's so cold, hurry up and change your clothes. Otherwise, what if you catch a cold? Eva's voice was very urgent and full of worry, but the moment he said it, Eva regretted it. Whether he was sick or not was none of her business. Hearing Eva's concerned words and nervous expression, Dexter felt that everything was worth it. As long as she was not indifferent to him, then everything he did was meaningful. In order to save the face that he had just lost, Eva pretended to be cold. I just want to show my concern to you because you took me to the hospital. As a friend, I should show my concern to you. At this time, the explanation was just a cover. Seeing Eva's awkward explanation, Dexter almost laughed out loud. Since Eva was worried about him, then he just didn't want to change his clothes and let her worry for a while more. God knew how much he enjoyed her worried expression. For a moment, Dexter felt that he was sick. Eva, were you worried about my body just now? Dexter asked expectantly. You can think whatever you want. As long as you are happy. Eva had already seen the pride in Dexter's eyes. She turned around and said. Luke did not know the cause and effect. Anyway, when she arrived at the living room, she saw Dexter and Eva ignoring each other. Put the things on the table and go down. Luke said to the servant behind him. As a result, all ten medicinal dishes were neatly listed on the dining table. The expression on Eva's face when he looked at those medicinal dishes could be described as horrifying, because the medicinal food's appearance was really unsatisfactory. Luke deliberately ignored Eva's expression, and continuously introduced the effects and methods of these medicinal meals to her. After the introduction he even said with a face full of schadenfreude, Miss Quinn I hope you like it. Eva was already shouting in her heart. I don't like it. This looked like a super dark dish. She wanted to run away just by looking at it. She even wanted to let her eat it. Wasn't this a joke? Eva also wanted to be polite to Luke, but she couldn't be polite when she looked at these dishes that came from him. She coldly refused. I won't eat these things. Right now, Eva only wanted to leave this place because the taste of this medicinal cuisine was too great. Just by smelling it, she already wanted to vomit. Miss Quinn, don't worry. I personally tasted these. The taste is very. Luke saw that Eva was unwilling and explained. At this time, Dexter interrupted him. Luo, leave this to me. After Luke left, Dexter walked to the dining table. She picked up her chopsticks and casually picked up something from a medicinal cuisine. Although it did not look good, the taste was still very good. However, Eva felt that Dexter pretended to be delicious because he was lying to her. She would not be fooled and still had a face of rejection. Eva, have you decided to stand by the side all the time and not eat with me? Dexter asked. Eva shook her head wildly. You can eat it. Don't worry about me. I'm not hungry. Although she was indeed very hungry now, she would rather starve to avoid diarrhea for her strange things. These are just some of the ingredients that you commonly see. Luke only matched them reasonably. I can guarantee that they are very delicious. Dexter knew that Eva was frightened by the appearance of the medicinal cuisine, but to be honest, the taste was really good, so he patiently coaxed. Eva still shook his head. Don't worry about me. If you like to eat, eat more. Luke knew that Dexter was wet, so he went upstairs to get his clothes for him. After a while he took them down. President, you should change your clothes before eating. Otherwise, you should be sick. Dexter turned around and looked at the clean clothes in his hands. It was a casual home dress. This was also the only casual home clothes that Dexter had. He usually wore formal clothes except for sleeping. He frowned unhappily. Why is it this dress? He had found only one piece of clothing, and he had really put in a lot of effort. Luke had long wanted to change the fact that Dexter still had to wear a stiff suit at home. Of course this idea had never been realized. This time he still did it when Eva was here. President, shouldn't you wear home clothes at home? 
Because Eva was here, Luke was sure that he would not get angry. Dexter looked at Eva. Although he did not like this kind of casual home clothes, he still changed into them. He came out of the toilet. The light in Eva's eyes instantly lit up. She was subconsciously stunned. Eva thought that a person like Dexter had to wear a standard suit to show off his cold temperament. He did not expect that he would be so suitable and good-looking in a warm home dress. The home clothes made the cold temperament of his body perfect, making him look round and gentle. Compared to him who wore a suit all year round, the current him gave people a breath of sunshine and gave people a sense of closeness. Dexter did not miss the stunning look that flashed across Eva's face. He walked to her side with a faint smile on his face. Does it look good? Eva withdrew his gaze and said against his conscience, It's just like that. Dexter knew that she was being stubborn, but he did not expose her. He naturally pulled her hand and walked to the dining table. Don't refuse. Eat with me. I said that these medicinal dishes are delicious. You have to believe me this once. Dexter almost pressed Eva's leaping body to the table. Luo, do we only eat these medicinal dishes tonight? Do we not have to eat rice? Dexter asked. I've prepared spaghetti for you. Without asking for Dexter's opinion, Luke was making spaghetti. Dexter took a deep look at Luke. He actually made the decision without consulting him. It seemed that he was too indulgent. The look in President's eyes was too threatening. Luke slowly lowered his head and accepted his fate. President, wait a moment. I will cook for you immediately. Dexter looked at Luke's soulless back and could not help but think. Luke had been with him for a long time. He had never been so absent-minded and acted on his own. Did something happen to him? Eva really ate a mouthful of medicinal cuisine under Dexter's repeated requests. Although it was not as bad as he thought, it was not as bad as Dexter said. Because of the rejection from the bottom of his heart, Eva only ate a little and did not eat it. As Luke cleaned up the dishes, Dexter said to him, Luke, come to my study. I have something to ask you. Luke was a senior butler. He didn't need to wash dishes, but it was strange that he took the initiative to do these things today. Although Luke still had a smile on his face, there were tears in the smile in Dexter's eyes. After eating the medicinal food, Dexter and Luke went to talk about things. Eva was really bored so he could only sit on the sofa and watch TV shows out of boredom. In study, Dexter's face sank as he asked Lua what happened to you today? What happened? Luke's expression was a bit sad. What kind of attitude is this? Are you provoking me? If it wasn't for the deep relationship between Dexter and Luke, he would have quit him long ago. Dexter was a person who paid great attention to the details, so the assistant beside him was personally trained by him, and he was almost never wrong in his work. Luke's expression became more and more lonely, and his voice was full of loneliness and sadness. President, do you think it is hard to accept loving someone? Or can a broken mirror really become round again? Without waiting for Dexter's answer, he laughed bitterly. Chinese culture is really complicated. Even the two words contain layer after layer of deep meaning. Looking at Luke's current state, Dexter casually guessed, Luo, are you out of love? His current state was just like when Eva told him not to look for her again. Luke shook his head. I never got it so I didn't lose it. Dexter was never a person who would be moved by feelings. He was probably infected by Luke's feelings. He could not help but be kind. I'll give you a day off. You can go anywhere you want. For Dexter, Luke was considered very powerful because he was too omnipotent. It seemed that there was nothing in this world that he did not know but even such a powerful man would be influenced by feelings. Thinking about what Luke had just said, Dexter couldn't help but connect it to himself. Wasn't the yearning and state of mind that covered the water and couldn't be collected and the broken mirror that was round referring to himself and Eva? Overflowing water was Dexter's feelings for Eva, and a quiet and heavy circle was Dexter's beautiful wish. In the hall, Eva was still watching TV alone, but she just watched the TV and emptied her mind. Dexter packed up his emotions and went downstairs. Seeing that Eva was watching TV seriously, he sat next to her. Eva was too absorbed in watching TV and did not notice his arrival. He did not disturb her and just watched the TV screen as intently as Chapter 262 His Secret Base Don't cry after I die. I'm afraid that your tears will dirty the path of my reincarnation. The woman's voice on TV was sharp and shrill, like a long knife cutting through the sky. Eva unconsciously sighed. In fact, Dexter didn't look at it at all. He just enjoyed the feeling of being able to sit beside Eva. The more he loved Eva, the less he could get. It had been a long time since Eva had a good sleep. She was so sleepy watching TV that even the laughter in the TV had become a lullaby. However, she did not want to fall asleep under Dexter's eyes, so she could only force herself not to fall asleep. 
However, sleepiness was not something that human beings could resist. In the end, Eva fell on Dexter's shoulder and slept comfortably. Only after feeling Eva's deep and shallow breaths could Dexter be sure that Eva had fallen asleep. Only then did she slightly turn her head to look at her quiet face. At this moment she was extremely satisfied. Dexter's voice was very soft, as if she was talking to herself. Eva, can we recircle the mirror? Eva did not hear what Dexter was saying at all. He replied indifferently, yes. A satisfied smile appeared on Dexter's lips. He reached out and pinched Eva's face. Although she had lost a lot of weight, her flesh was still soft and very comfortable to pinch. Dexter had never thought that there would be a woman in this world who was so cute, even when she was asleep. Then I'll take it as you promised. You are not allowed to go back on your word. When Eva woke up, she found that she was no longer on the sofa but on the bed. She opened her eyes and asked herself, where is this? She got up from the bed, put on her slippers, and walked to the bedside to pull open the heavy curtains. The room suddenly lit up. For the memory of last night, Eva remembered that she and Dexter were watching TV on the sofa. Needless to say, she knew that Dexter had carried her up. But fortunately, he was not here in the morning. Thinking of Dexter, she could not help but be angry. Yesterday, if not for Dexter's obstruction, she had just finished the work she owed a week off. Now because of him, she owed a lot of work to do. There was a series of knocks on the door. Eva looked at the time on the wall. It was still very early. Who had gotten up so early? Eva casually said, come in. The door was open from the outside with a crack, and Dexter's face appeared in Eva's line of sight. Eva's face immediately sank. She was still arguing with Dexter. He shouldn't have brought her to this place yesterday. I didn't expect you to wake up so early. Good morning. Dexter just knocked on the door with the mentality of trying. If you didn't knock on my door so early, I think I would sleep a little longer. Eva said in a bad tone. You can continue to sleep now. Then we will return to the city in the afternoon. Dexter raised his eyebrows and deliberately said. Eva did not believe Dexter's words. He was so kind. Since you're up, quickly go down and have breakfast. Then I'll send you back to the city. Dexter stopped teasing Eva and said seriously. Last night, Eva slept very early. The doctor specifically said that a person's sleep could not be less than one time, nor could it be higher than one time. He was afraid that Eva would sleep too much, so he knocked on the door. After Dexter finished speaking, he left. Eva did not know whether what Dexter said was true or just teasing her. After not seeing Sally for the whole night, Eva already missed her very much. She really wanted to return to the city now, but was Dexter really such a trustworthy person? Although she did not trust Dexter very much, she could not sleep anyway. She might as well go eat breakfast. Luke's breakfast must have been very good. Dexter sat at the dining table, reading the newspaper as usual. Recently, the business news of Baltimore had been occupied by Roger. He said that he led his Johnson family to defeat Douglas family without being able to resist. It could be seen that Roger's hatred for Nina was really deep in his bones. Eva chose a seat furthest away from Dexter and sat down. Are you done packing? Eva nodded. Breakfast is ready. Dexter put down the newspaper in her hand. Dexter was familiar with Eva's taste. Eva liked sweets. If it was in the past, Dexter would definitely prepare some sweets for Eva. However, today it was only a bowl of porridge that was strangely unknown. It was not plain kanji. She did not know what was in it. Eva usually had to have dessert for breakfast. She looked at Dexter in disgust and complained that he clearly knew her preferences, but he actually forgot. Of course, Dexter could see her sadness and she automatically moved her chopsticks. If you don't move, are you not hungry? Dexter deliberately asked. Of course, Eva would not make any requests to Dexter. He casually cooked up. It's too hot. I'll eat it when it gets cold. Although Dexter knew that this was not the real reason why Eva did not move his chopsticks, he still diligently stirred the porridge in the bowl, hoping to use this method to make the porridge cool down as soon as possible. After a while, the porridge in Dexter's hand was already warm. He pushed it to Eva. Eat this bowl, it is no longer hot. It was indeed not hot, but after Dexter's excessive stirring, the bowl of porridge had already become very disgusting. Eva could not eat it anymore, so he pushed it in front of Dexter again. Thank you, you can eat. Eva knew that Dexter meant well. Eva took her bowl and reluctantly took a bite. Her pupils suddenly widened. She thought that it was not delicious, but she did not expect it to taste so good. Suddenly, she felt that it was a very wrong decision to sit still. In a short while, the bowl in Eva's hand had already been emptied. When Dexter saw how cooperative Eva was, 
A satisfied smile appeared on his face. He asked with concern, Do I still need to help you fill another bowl? Although Eva liked to eat very much, his appetite was very small, so this bowl was already the greatest respect for food. I don't need it. I'm full. Eva's working hours were nine o'clock. If Dexter sent her back now, she could still make it to work. However, Dexter sent a leisurely invitation to Eva. Eva, have breakfast to accompany you for a walk? Eva shook her head. She just wanted to go back to the city. She didn't want to go anywhere except the city. Shall we go back to the city? Dexter had already seen through her anxiety and asked. Eva saw that Dexter finally asked the key point. She nodded quickly. She didn't go to work yesterday. She didn't dare to ask the manager for leave. Today, she didn't know how to face the manager's storm. There was a sly smile in Dexter's eyes. If you want to go back, you can take a walk with me. Eva made the biggest compromise. We can only take a walk for half an hour. Don't have anything else to do this time. Send me back after the walk. Dexter was a little surprised. Did someone need half an hour to walk? Ten minutes should be enough. However, Dexter did not say anything. For no reason, he gave him another twenty minutes. He was happy to accept it. Dexter walked in front and said to the stunned Eva behind him, Hurry up and catch up. I'll take you to a good place. Although this was a distant suburbs, it was indeed a place where the rich gathered. Therefore, not only was the environment good, the air was good, but it was also very quiet like a paradise. She had been driving all the way here, and every time she was in a bad mood, she was not in the mood to admire these flowers and plants and unique designs. Now, she was walking on the road with Dexter one after the other. This was a retro blue stone path. Because of the heavy rain yesterday, the dust on the stone was washed clean, clean and green. There were tall evergreen trees on both sides of the road. The uncle was covered in artificial grass, and there were many colorful flowers on the grass. I like to come to this place. Every time I walk outside after eating, my thinking will be expanded. But for you, you need to breathe fresh air. After all, your body is very weak because of the city's pollution. Dexter was silent all the way and finally said, Eva liked the quiet and beautiful atmosphere around him and did not want to argue with Dexter. He nodded obediently. Yes, this is indeed a good place. There is a stream ahead. Do you want me to take you to have a look? Dexter asked for Eva's opinion. Dexter's villa was surrounded by mountains, and not far away, there was a stream passing by. Eva quickly followed, proving that she wanted to go and have a look. In order to save time, Dexter also sped up a little, and the two of them soon arrived at their destination. This place was really quiet, as if no one had come to the paradise. A clear stream flowed quietly in front of her, but there was the sound of flowing water. The wind in the mountains rushed down and surrounded her gently. Eva felt that she was standing naked in nature, and her mood was like being hit by spring, which was extremely happy. This place of mine is not bad, right? Dexter saw a childlike smile on Eva's face. Eva nodded. I agree with what you said. If you like this place, you can tell me. I will bring you here often. In fact, as long as Eva was willing, Dexter was even willing to stay here with her for a long time. This could be said to be a luxurious dream for Dexter. Liking was one thing, but coming here with Dexter for a long time was not possible. Eva knew that she must not give Dexter this promise. Otherwise, he would be insatiable. Eva spent a pleasant morning here. She ate delicious porridge and saw beautiful scenery. Her mood was a little better, and Dexter also became Chapter 263 Provoked. I haven't finished my business in England. I still have to leave B City for a while. On the way back, Dexter said. Assistant could help with the rest of the things, but he had to sign the contract with Lynn. Are you going to England to open your market there? Dexter had always been a sleeping lion. Eva had always wondered why he did not do it when he clearly had the ability to open the international market. Now that he thought about it, he might be waiting for the most suitable time. After all, no one would know what Dexter Lynn was thinking as long as he did not say it himself. I should also do something. Now is the time for me. Dexter had the most clear plan for every action he took. He had rested for a long time, and now he could finally bring Lin Group to the Qingyun Peak. Eva smiled politely. Then I wish you success in advance. Eva was not worried about Dexter at all. If Dexter could not open the international market, who else could? This was Lin Group's future development direction. Everyone knew that Dexter would not only satisfy the domestic market. Dexter smiled faintly. I will. Then he casually asked. Did Zack decide to stay in England? Although Eva was Zack's nominal wife, she rarely inquired about the company, so only Zack knew these things. No matter what decision Zack made, she would support it. 
Zack will have his own judgment. I don't know this, Eva said. Dexter listened to the intimate address that Eva casually called out, and his heart was filled with jealousy. Eva suddenly thought of something and asked, Dexter, do you want to cooperate with Stone? If he could cooperate with Dexter, Stone would also get a lot of benefits. Dexter had just been jealous of Zack and would not choose to cooperate with his love rival. He would be jealous to death. I won't cooperate with him. It will never be possible. Eva just asked casually. Even if there was no possibility, he could say it in a euphemistic way. There was no need for such a big reaction and such a firm denial. It was really impolite. Eva could be said to be quite dissatisfied in his heart. After a long time, Dexter found that his words were too straightforward and wanted to be redeemed, so he explained reluctantly, It's not that I don't want to cooperate with Zack, but there is indeed no suitable project to cooperate with Stone recently. Eva actually talked about business matters with Dexter. He didn't know when it started, but their original lovers could only talk about these things that had no anger or memories. It was really awkward to think about it. Dexter was as dazzling as the car. Eva had always maintained a low profile in the company, so he didn't want to be destroyed like this. So he asked Dexter to park the car a distance away from the company. Stop the car now. After the car stopped, Eva sneaked out of the car, but Dexter's voice came from behind. This place is at least a thousand meters away from your company. Do you want to walk over in high heels? He really did not understand what Eva was thinking. Eva smiled brightly, and his smile made Dexter dazzling. Didn't you say that my body is not good? I should move around a little more. I can't sit in the office for a long time. Dexter did not tell Eva that she was wearing the clothes he had prepared for her today, not the lifeless old-fashioned set that she usually wore at work. Eva came downstairs of the company happily. After working in the company for so long, there was no more affection between her colleagues. When she returned to the company, she naturally felt a sense of intimacy. Eva smiled at a colleague she knew. Just as she was about to greet him, she found that the man had already lowered his head with a red face. She looked at her colleague in surprise. She really did not know what this colleague was doing. Why did he have such a reaction? After a while, Eva walked past a mirror and saw her current appearance. She finally understood why the colleague just now had that kind of expression. No wonder Dexter told her that it was not suitable to go to work today. So that was what he meant. Eva completely forgot that she was still in Dexter's villa. With her attire today, who would know that she was Eva? Eva knew that if she wanted to go to work, she had to go back and wear her own outfit. She clearly thought that she could not be late for work today, but now it seemed that she had to be late. When Eva returned to Stone Villa, Simone had already gone to school, and Sally was playing in boredom with the servants. When she saw that Eva had returned, she bared her fangs and bared her teeth as she snuggled into her embrace, wanting Eva to play with her for a while. Eva kissed Sally on the cheek and ruthlessly refused. Baby I'm sorry. Mommy still has things to do now, so I won't accompany you for now. Sally was a very principled person. She only liked to play with Zack and Eva. Simone would definitely not play with the servants. Even if none of them were here, she would rather play with her fingers by herself. Sally originally thought that her boredom was going to be saved by her mother, but unexpectedly, she was abandoned by her mother again. She looked at Eva with a disappointed face. She did not expect that she was such a heartless mother. It seemed that she would be bored for another day, so bored that her sister would end school. Sally really missed Simone now. Only Simone was willing to play with her unconditionally and could pamper her. Hey, I miss my sister. Stone's Ministry of Foreign Affairs was very lively today. Because Eva had not come to work for two days and had not taken leave, all the old employees were denouncing Eva, because every employee of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs worked as one, because Eva delayed the progress, everyone's work was stranded. Eva regretted his behavior of staying in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to catch the mole. It was simply too stupid. He did not find any trace of the mole, but instead caused the employees to be angry. It was already unforgivable to be late, but Eva actually gave himself a holiday first and then played later, and the manager scolded Eva until he was bleeding. Although Eva felt sorry for himself at the same time, he admired the mole. He was really calm. The work of this department was too heavy. Even if there were internal ghosts, Eva began to respect the mole. After all, in order to steal secrets, he had put in a lot of effort. At noon, Eva really couldn't bear the anger of all the employees. She decided to find Daniel. During lunch break, Daniel was sleeping. There was a sign that said, Don't disturb hanging at the door. However, Eva still knocked on the door desperately. Daniel's beautiful dream was awakened by this rapid knock on the door. He opened the door in a hurry. 
When he saw Eva, all his anger was forcibly held back. Madam, why are you looking for me? Daniel woke up from his nap and asked respectfully. Eva walked in and slammed the door. It was not easy for her to adjust her emotions. She said to Daniel in a consulting tone, There is something I don't know what to do. I want to discuss it with you. Daniel showed an amiable smile. Madam, you don't have to be so polite. If there is anything, just say it. As long as I can do it, I will help you. If I can't do it, I will do my best to help you. I have been in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for so long and found some problems. I think we should take certain measures according to these problems. Eva's tone was firm. As the manager, he naturally knew that there was a problem with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. However, Mrs. President stayed in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for such a long time and did not speak. He thought that Mrs. President had good adaptability and had accepted the situation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in a few days. What is the problem? Daniel asked carefully. I'll talk about the problem of the work division first. It is good to divide the work carefully, but it is a burden to be too detailed. If there is someone who can't complete the work on time, then the person who cooperates with him can't complete the work. This is not cooperation, this is a hindrance. This was Eva's personal experience. Because she did not come to the company yesterday, several colleagues' progress was dragged down by her. Eva deeply apologized to this. In addition, the organization of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is weak and likes to engage in small groups. Moreover, they are self-centered and refuse to accept new forces. It is basically impossible for newcomers to integrate into the company. President M.O., you also know that if a company is full of old people, this company is a company without innovation. This was something that Eva had always wanted to say. At that time, it was when she was pushed aside that Zach would know after telling Daniel, and then she would not be allowed to continue working in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Daniel was very nervous. The questions that Eva said were very obvious, but he did not know what method to urge them to correct. The other problems are another, but the first one is the two problems that I just said. It must be solved, or the small problems will develop into a big problem and become a big tumor that threatens the survival of the company. Eva said with a set of official words, Madam, I can think of a solution to the problem of division of labor, but I really can't think of any good solutions for the group distribution and the forming of cliques. Daniel said with some difficulty, he had always wanted to solve this problem but he had always thought hard about it so it existed until now. Doesn't Director Imo know what it means to warn others? For stubborn people they could only use more forceful means. Otherwise they really felt that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was their world. I wonder who the one in Madam's mind is? All the small groups were relatively equal. They were all willing to gather together and were always xenophobic. Therefore it was difficult to find a leader. Moreover, Daniel did not want to guess Madam's intentions. If he guessed wrong, he would get into trouble. Chapter 264 Your time is limited. Find the most outstanding person in the team, but also the one with the most anti-xenophobic awareness. Eva was not a soft-hearted person. Since the matter was already terrible to the point that it could not be delayed, she had to make a decisive decision. Daniel was a person who was thirsty for talent. It was not easy for a company to have outstanding talents. If it was eliminated like this, he still could not bear to do so. If you don't agree with my method, take out your method. Anyway, I will only give you half a month. If the two problems in half a month have not been solved, you can resign yourself. Eva stayed in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for such a long time. If he did not do anything at all, then this period of time was really in vain. All along, Daniel had thought that Mrs. President was a little sheep. Today when he saw her true face, she did things with courage and was even a little aggressive. He had no choice but to bite the bullet and accept it. Later on, when Daniel finished this matter, he learned that the madam had been collectively denounced by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that day. Fortunately, Mrs. President did not tell President about this matter. If he told President, the entire Ministry of Foreign Affairs, including him, would probably be punished by President. When Eva returned to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, it was as if nothing had happened just now. There was still information about Changshan that needed her to complete. In fact, Eva did not need to be so tired. It was because these old employees pushed aside new employees that many new employees left soon, causing the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to lack personnel. When she was about to get off work, Eva received a call from Dexter. Hello, I'm very busy now. I don't have time to chat with you. Eva sounded a little tired. In fact, she should have done all these work yesterday. If it weren't for Dexter, she wouldn't be so busy today and wouldn't have been denounced. Therefore, she naturally didn't have a good tone for him. Whatever you are doing now. Anyway, I'm on the way to pick you up. 
I'll give you 10 minutes of time at the place where you got off today. If you don't show up after 10 minutes, I'll go to your office to find you. I believe you should be happy to see me. As long as Eva could get off work on time, he did not mind being a bad person. After Dexter finished speaking, he hung up the phone without waiting for Eva to speak. Eva looked at the phone speechlessly. Why was this person so overbearing? Eva knew that Dexter was someone who would do what he said. He did not care what others thought. In order to not cause a commotion in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Eva could only quickly pack up her things. After she finished packing, she began to look at the time while quickly working. As long as it was time to get off work, she would rush off work. Ten minutes seemed a little long. In fact, it was still a little tight for Eva, so she had to rush out of the office as fast as possible. Dexter arrived at the place when Eva got off work, so he looked at the time on his watch. Eva only had ten minutes left. Compared to Eva's appearance, Dexter was more willing to personally go to the company to pick her up. He liked to appear in public with Eva at the same time. No matter how much gossip he had, he was willing. As soon as the time was up, Eva was like an arrow that had left the line. He rushed out to swipe his card. The old employees who had previously denounced Eva saw that Eva was in such a hurry to get off work, and they all revealed looks of disdain. They had never seen such a person who didn't ask to get in. These old employees didn't even have time to work overtime, and she was still in such a hurry to get off work. It seemed that she didn't listen to all of today's denouncement. Eva was almost jogging. If he used it, it would be too slow. He was afraid that 10 minutes would not be enough. Soon he could see Dexter's car. There were still two minutes left. Eva sped up and finally arrived. Hee hee I finally arrived. After saying that Eva panted. She looked at him angrily with slanted eyes. Dexter how can you be so shameless? I have to go to work. Don't you feel guilty for disturbing my work? Thank you for your concern. I won't. Don't stand here. Hurry up and get in the car. I'll take you home. Dexter said firmly. At this point, Eva had no choice but to get in the car. She got in the car and slammed the car door. Eva was angry with Dexter, and her words were naturally full of guns and sticks. Dexter, aren't you going to say that President is going to be the driver now? Dexter smiled. I will only be your personal driver. I am very happy. Eva really did not know how to answer Dexter's words. She could only remain silent. She had never won against Dexter in a verbal battle but she often could not help but argue with him. Dexter hated Stone Villa the most because it belonged to another man. However, the woman he loved deeply lived in it. Therefore, there was no way he could not come to this place. Moreover, Dexter had already come to this place countless times. Some of them came with Eva, but most of them came secretly by himself. Dexter did not like Stone Villa, and Eva did not welcome him even more. Therefore, when there was still a long way to Stone Villa, Eva shouted to get off the car. Dexter, just stop here. Yesterday, Dexter forcibly took Eva away and was seen by Stone Villa's servants. Today, when she went back to change clothes, there were already many discussions. Although she avoided Eva, she could still hear some gossip. To Dexter, no matter how much gossip she had, it was not important. However, to Eva, she was already Zach's wife. She could not be entangled with other men in his space. Dexter would not pay attention to Eva's unreasonable request. There was still a long distance before Stone Villa arrived. Since that was the case, Eva could only tell the truth. Dexter, don't go to Stone Villa. No one welcomes you. Dexter should have been angry, but it was useless to be angry with Eva, so he suppressed his anger. I just want to see Simon. I haven't seen her for a long time. He knew that Eva was a thorny rose. Since he was not willing to remove the thorns on her body, he could only hold her tightly. Eva repeated what he had said more clearly. I already said that I don't want to appear with you in Stone Villa. Dexter originally didn't want to argue with Eva, but the more Eva said, the more excessive he became. He really couldn't bear it anymore. Eva, am I a person who has lost you a lot? Why don't you understand? My current identity is Zach's wife, but I am always entangled with you. If the servants in Stone Villa see it, what will they say about me? If Zach knows will he be very sad? I am not like you who can ignore anyone's feelings. I must take care of their feelings. Eva knew that Dexter had misunderstood her meaning. So he explained. Even though what Eva said was very reasonable, Dexter's face was still getting uglier and uglier. In the time to speak, Stone Villa was about to arrive. He parked the car a distance away from Stone Villa and turned the car around. As you wish, get off, Dexter said coldly. Dexter had never been so embarrassed in his life, but Eva ignored his principles and bottom line like this. However, he had no choice. 
she was the person he loved so he could only break his principles again and again. After Eva got out of the car, she walked to Stone Villa without any attachment. She knew that she was a little cruel to Dexter. However, she also wanted Dexter to stop pestering her. She and him would not have a good ending. It was better not to have another chance. In the end she was sad again. It was not until Eva entered the door that Stone Villa closed that Dexter left quickly. With anger and self-mockery, she stepped on the accelerator. Even if she could not help but look down on herself, she still had to endure the entanglement. After Eva entered the room, he took off his coat and changed into casual home clothes. The house only looked more comfortable and warm. Simone had already returned from school. He was telling a fairy tale to Sally, who had been lonely for a day. Although Sally did not understand why, he still pretended to understand and listen with relish. He did not know where the story was going but Sally actually commented, This Snow White is really stupid. I do not like him. Eva really wanted to ridicule her. You little radish head, what do you know? Because she had been with Simone for a long time, she would patiently teach Sally how to speak, so her vocabulary had increased rapidly during this period of time. Even simple communication with adults was no longer a problem. But this also brought another problem, which was that she was no longer adorable and her poisonous tongue was rising. Eva became interested and asked, Why don't you like Snow White? She's stupid. Even apples don't taste good. She still wants to eat apples. Sally had an expression of understanding. Apples are quite delicious. I like apples. Simone retorted, I don't want to read Grimm's fairy tale anymore. Next time tell me about it. Sally said in disgust. He heard from his mother that many children like to read this fairy tale book. He really didn't understand what was so good about it. Simone felt that ever since his sister spoke more and more, she became more and more picky about everything, so he asked helplessly, in addition to the storybooks, does Sally have anything else she likes? Sally said almost without thinking, yes, play games, mom plays games, I'll see. Of course, Sally could not play games on her own. What she liked were the sound effects and dynamic scenes of the game, which made her very excited. She told her sister her own preferences just so that Simone could play games for her in the future before her mother came home from work. However, she did not expect that her sister was also her mother's daughter. She had been ordered to stop playing games long ago. Her plan was ruined. Chapter 265 and Miles Eva reiterated her philosophy once again. Children can't watch games and they can't play games. She didn't want her two children to hold their eyes when they were very young and hinder the view of the world. Sally looked at Eva with disappointment. All right. Seeing that her sister was unhappy, Simone immediately took out the surprise she had prepared. Recently, she had been very fascinated with this comic book. She believed that her sister would definitely like it. Sister, I bought you a comic book. You can't read it but you can read it. In the future you won't read fairy tales anymore. Just read this. Simone said as if she was presenting a treasure. How could Sally know what a fairy tale book was? She looked at Simone in confusion. I don't understand. What is a comic book? Sally had liked things with bright colors since she was a child, so she liked games. This is like a game with many beautiful colors. Simone explained in a way that Sally could understand. Eva found that Simone was becoming better and better. Most of the time she was more thoughtful than her as a mother. She had never been jealous of Sally. She was really good to her sister. In fact she had never said that Simone was more and more like Miles. However, she was still more lively and cheerful than Miles. However, she was as responsible and responsible as him. Every time she saw the similar eyebrows of Simone and Miles, she would think of Miles, who was now lost in an unknown corner. How was he? Did he eat well and sleep well? Was his body as healthy as before? There was still no harvest from strawberry. Even if her search circle had expanded to all the regions in the country, she had not found any traces of Miles' existence. As long as Strawberry was sure that he could not find any traces of Miles' existence in the country, then Miles could only go abroad. If he really went abroad, the search range would be wider, which meant that the difficulty of finding people would continue to increase. Eva kept praying in his heart. Miles, if you miss your mother and sister, you should come back quickly. Or tell your mother where you are now and your mother will come to pick you up. Baltimore was a city surrounded by mountains on all sides. It was called a mountain city by many people affectionately. Although it was difficult to distinguish which was the most majestic among the mountains, it was easy to distinguish which was the most beautiful. This mountain, which was called the most beautiful in B City, was built with a house. Don't think that it was a place where a hermit lived, but it was actually a unique hotel. It can be described as a rotten piece of jade. 
Through the rough appearance we can see all kinds of equipment in the room, and the decoration style has a different flavor. This is not a place that ordinary people can live in. If someone had not told us, no one would know that staying here for a night would cost more than a seven-star hotel. Angeli followed his father back to the country and was directly sent to this place. It had been many days. Except for a few servants who were sent to serve him, he could not see anyone else. Angeli looked at the familiar scenery outside the window and murmured, This is the life of standing aloof from worldly affairs. To be honest, I still miss Celia a little. Andrew just didn't want to be separated from Gail. Even if he couldn't see anyone in the future, he was willing. To him, as long as he had a father, nothing was important anymore. There was a rhythmic knock on the door, followed by a familiar voice, Angel. Hearing his father's voice, Angel knew that his father had come to pick him up. It had been a few days since he had seen his father, and he had already missed him a lot. Angel's voice revealed a hint of excitement. Dad, you're here. When there was no boy, Angel was like a cold adult. But when he saw his father, he became a lively little boy in a second. This change made the servants stunned. They all wondered if this was the cold little boy they saw a few days ago. The pollution in B-City is too serious. Only the air in this place is the best. You need to recuperate. This place is the best for your body. Ben looked at Angel with concern. Bosun saved Angel in the fire. Because he inhaled too much smoke and dust, his lungs were seriously damaged, so his ability to purify the air was greatly reduced. Therefore, he had a very high requirement for living in the environment. Angel's face darkened. It's not very good here. I don't feel particularly comfortable either. Bosun knew what Angel was thinking. Then I'll send you back to the sanatorium. Do you miss that little girl? He really missed Lilla but that was not the point. He just didn't want to live here alone. He wanted to be with his father every moment. Andrew thought that what Ben said was the truth, and his expression immediately became a little nervous. I don't want to go back to the sanatorium. I want to be with Dad. For Angel, not only was Ben his father, but he was also his savior, so his dependence on him had already surpassed that of ordinary father and son. In fact, Angel's character was not so clingy, but there was no way. He could not tell what his feelings for Dad were. He only knew that if he left him, he did not know who to trust. He felt that everyone in the world was going to hurt him. Bosun said with some regret, Even if you don't want to go back to England, you have to go back because this city is not something you can stay in for a long time. Andrew asked doubtfully, Dad, you want me to go back to England alone again? Why don't you stay with me just like before? Dad has a lot of things to do. When Dad is done, I will come to you. Then we will stay in England and never return to China. Ben prime me seriously. Angel never understood why Ben wanted to stay in the country to do things. He did not want him to stay in the country. Although the environment in the country was indeed not as good as overseas, he could still find a good place if he looked carefully. Why did he have to send him abroad? I really don't understand. Bone touched Angel's head. He had said before that he could find a sense of security when he touched him like this. Angel, don't worry. Dad will definitely do his best to settle everything here in a year, and then come to find you. Ben did his best to appease his sensitive thoughts. Andrew had been in the room for many days. He ate very little and did not speak or laugh. These were the reactions of the servants to him, so he came to see him. Bosun decided to take him out for a walk. Otherwise, he would definitely have a problem. Daddy will take you out for a walk. Angel had long wanted to go out for a walk. The people who stayed here were about to taste bad. Okay. I'm very happy to be able to go out with Daddy. Flames and Angel were very different in terms of food and drink. He didn't have meat or not, but Angel didn't like to eat meat. Thus he always felt that he was growing and couldn't eat enough. Dad will take you to the city to eat delicious food. He swallowed his saliva first. Bosun originally liked to wear suits, but in order to make Angel feel close, he preferred to wear warm home clothes or casual things in front of him, and even wear parent-child clothes to make him happy. Both of them were exceptionally handsome, and often attracted many envious or praising gazes. You are too good-looking. For some people, you are too conspicuous so you have to put on a hat. Ben put a hat on Angel's head and helped him lower the brim of the hat. Bon handed him a white mask. You have to wear this too. It is safer for you to be fully armed. Angeli hated wearing masks but it was a foggy day now. There were too many pollutants in the air so he had to wear them. In order to make Angel more acceptable, he also dressed up with him, but the smile on his face was very bright, and he looked much brighter than Angel. Angel liked the present time very much. It was too satisfying to go shopping hand in hand with her father. 
Today the Hazenby city was too thick. It was difficult for Eva to see the road in front of her when she drove, so for the sake of safety, her driving speed was almost unable to catch up with her walking speed. Today was a day off. Eva left Simone and Sally at home. She wanted to have a big meal alone. Women always needed to be alone. She seemed to have had a child since a long time ago. After having a child, she took care of almost everything with the child. Today, she finally hardened her heart to not bring the child. She wandered around the city alone, and then sat down in a more comfortable restaurant to have a good meal. Of course, the chef in Stone Villa was also a chef that Zach had specially found abroad. His cooking skills were also very good, but after eating too much at home, she missed the feeling of eating outside. Eva wanted to go to the best Western restaurant in B City today. She had come with Dexter once before. After eating the steak here, she couldn't forget it and thought about it like crazy. As soon as she stepped into the Western restaurant, her eyes were attracted by a pair of father and son in the corner. Their backs were facing Eva and they were dressed in eye-catching parent-child clothes, looking warm and loving. However, the father and son did not communicate at all throughout the whole process. The two of them sat in a well-behaved manner, both looking very cultured. Eva walked towards the seat she had booked and sized up the father and son. She slowly felt that the back view of the father and son pair was somewhat familiar, and it was especially familiar. The names were clearly already on the tip of her tongue, but she just could not say it. This father and son pair seemed to have been here for a long time. Now that they had finished eating, the father left with his son. Eva's gaze remained on the father and son pair. Angelo seemed to feel a strong gaze. Looking back, their eyes collided in the air. Eva's heart stopped beating for a moment. That pair of eyes. Those eyes miss Miles too much. Could it be Miles? Eva did not hesitate and chased after them. However, because she was stunned for a while, when she chased after them, they had already disappeared. This restaurant was located at the intersection, so Eva did not know which direction they were going. Chapter 266 About Miles' Portrait Eva's head was a little heavy, and her eyes could not see clearly. She actually missed the opportunity to find Miles again and again. Suddenly, Eva had a flash of inspiration. It was very likely that they had gone to the parking lot to get a car, so they ran away. When attendants saw Eva leave, he quickly chased out. The restaurant had a rule that no matter whether you ate or not, the money must be paid for. Eva was blocked by someone, and his face was full of anxiety. Miss, you need to pay before you can leave. Eva did not know the rules of the restaurant at all, but in order to not let her waste her time, he directly took out his gold card and threw it to her. Now I can go, right? Without waiting for her to respond, Eva directly overthrew attendant and ran to the underground parking lot. Of course, Eva could not be sure that the child was miles with his eyes, but as long as there was a glimmer of hope, Eva would not let it go. If the child was Miles, if she did not chase him this time and let him leave, then she would miss Miles again. When Eva ran to the garage, he happened to pass by a car and saw a child in a hurry. Miles, Miles, I am mother. Eva was sure that the child was Miles. Eva chased after him, but how could his speed compare to the speed of the car? In a short while, Eva was shaken off. She had been shouting at the top of her lungs. Miles, stop the car. Unfortunately, the car still disappeared in the fog under her eyes. In fact, Angel heard Eva shout. Dad, did you hear a woman shout just now? It sounds so scary. Blaze did not hear it, so he felt very confused. I didn't hear it. There was no longer any trace of Miles in Eva's line of sight. She actually watched Miles slip away from under her eyes once again. It was as if all the strength in her body had been sucked out, and she sat limply on the ground. How could she care about her image right now? She only knew that she had once again missed out on her Miles. The next time she wanted to see Miles, she did not know when it would be. Because attendant had taken Eva's gold card, she could not pay without her own password, so she had to go through a lot of hardships to catch up. This lady, for the sake of making it convenient for you to pay, I came with a card reader. Please enter your secret. Attendant's eyes were very firm. No one could escape the bill under her eyes. The password is 776755. Eva was a money grubber but compared to the child, the child was the most important thing in her life. She had just lost her miles, and now her mood was very heavy. She only wanted to be calm alone and did not want to talk to anyone. Attendant looked at Eva in shock. No one directly threw the card to others and even said the password so openly. Was she not afraid that she was a bad person? Madam, you should input it yourself. Before she could finish speaking, she was interrupted by Eva. She looked at her coldly and roared. I am very annoyed now. Can you go further? Attendant continued to exert his unyielding spirit and continued to destroy Eva. 
This lady you should still. Eva snatched the gold card from attendant's hand and shouted furiously. Get lost. She could no longer care about her own qualities. She only knew that her emotions were completely out of her control. Eva staggered out of the parking lot. Attendant looked at Eva's back with a helpless and sullen expression. What bad luck had she encountered today that she would meet such a strange guest? Eva's car stopped outside the restaurant. After she got in the car she started it. Now her mind was still full of dense white, and she could not think about anything. She regretted that she had just come to see the child and did not put her mind on the adult. If she remembered more characteristics it would be easy to find the adult. Because Eva had no memory of the adult at all, when she desperately wanted to recall, the memory was blurred. Eva felt as if there was something heavy in her heart. She could not breathe and urgently needed to talk to someone, but she could not find a suitable candidate. After thinking about it she still called Zach. Eva was still a little excited and could not restrain herself. Zach I just saw Miles. Zach was a little puzzled. After all, since the last time he saw a little boy who looked very much like Miles on the street, he had also sent people to search desperately. Have you seen Miles? Logically speaking, he had only seen Miles not long ago. How did he run from England to China so quickly? It was really a strange journey. Could it be that someone had done it on purpose? However, in the end, Zack still felt that Eva had been missing him too much, causing him to hallucinate and treat other people's children as Miles. Eva, are you sure it must be Miles? Zack, believe me. I am sure it is Miles. This time, Eva was very sure because she saw the side of Miles' face. Although she was more mature than three years ago, she was his mother. She still knew him. Zack's eyes became deep. Her fingers tapped on the table, making a rhythmic note. These things were really getting more and more complicated. Could it be that someone was secretly manipulating all of this, constantly attracting the attention of these people, but they were not allowed to find Miles? What exactly did they want to do? Eva was now very helpless. She was a little depressed. Zach, what do you think I should do to find Miles? I miss him so much. I miss him so much. Tell Roger to help you find Miles. Zach had just gone abroad. There were very important things that he could not leave. Now, the only person he could trust in the country was Roger. After Zach's reminder, Eva suddenly thought of Roger. His strength was comparable to Dexter, and he would definitely be able to help her. Why didn't I think of Roger? I can still find him to help me. After hanging up the phone, Eva cheered up. She had finally found traces of Miles. This time she did not wait anymore. She wanted to take the initiative. Eva called Roger and asked him to find her. He drove to Stone Villa without any delay. At this time, Eva had just arrived home not long ago. Eva, have you really seen the child's face clearly? Is he Miles? Roger was the same as Zach. The mother of the child generally liked to exaggerate the facts. Moreover, he had already sent people to turn the entire city upside down and had not found Miles. How could he still appear in this city? Did he know in advance that they were looking for him? So he hid abroad and ran back to the country after knowing that they had not found him? Roger, I know it's my Miles. I saw his face. Eva was afraid that Roger would not believe him, so he said again and again, That must be Miles, I know his face and eyes. I'm sure it's Miles. Roger really couldn't figure it out, so he reminded, Eva, the haze has been serious these days. Do you have a bad eye? No, no, I have already chased to the parking lot. There is no haze in the parking lot. I must have seen it correctly. Eva knew that Roger did not see it personally. She said that she saw it and there was no evidence to prove it. She could only constantly emphasize that she really saw it. Roger was very rational and could help Eva analyze it logically. Eva, calm down now and slowly tell me what he was like when you saw Miles. Eva took a deep breath. She knew that only by being calm would she have a greater chance of finding Miles. She forced herself to calm down. She recalled the child she had just seen and began to slowly tell her what he was wearing. Roger frowned from time to time, but he always maintained a calm demeanor, only constantly interrupting Eva. Eva, he is wearing a hat and a mask. How did you see his face? Roger frowned tightly. He was almost sure that Eva had the wrong person. After so many years, Miles has grown very tall. I heard that he is wearing a black hat and a black mask. Eva said while waving his hands. When Eva said this, Roger had been drawing something on the paper. When Eva finished speaking, he raised the thing he drew. Are you talking about this little boy? Roger had helped the police restore the criminal's appearance before, so he could restore the charm of a character in the shortest time possible. There is something wrong with the clothes you drew. Eva looked at Miles' clothes and shook his head. He was wearing a very simple but very trendy guard suit. 
Then describe it to me carefully. I will change it. Roger said patiently. Putting aside the billions of projects aside, he was probably the only one who played the game with Eva. Perhaps there was also that man Dexter. Eva had never thought of looking for someone through a child's show, but Roger had actually thought of it. She did not know if it was useful or not. Anyway, her mood was slightly relaxed now. Roger, I am sorry to trouble you again, but I really can't find someone else to help me. Roger ignored Eva. At this moment all his energy was on the painting. The brush in his hand moved quickly, making a hissing sound as it rubbed against the paper. The painting is done. Take a look now. This time Roger could be said to be full of confidence. Eva only took a glance and exclaimed, It's too similar. It's exactly the same. Roger, you're simply too amazing. Then I'll have my people start searching according to this portrait, Roger said. Therefore Roger and Eva began to split up. Eva decided to tell Strawberry this news. She had more spies in the chapter 267 entering the mental hospital again. Eva drove the car as fast as she could. Soon she arrived at the detective agency. She knocked on the door hurriedly. After a while, Strawberry came to open the door. She was a little surprised to see Eva. She had not come to see her for a long time. Strawberry greeted her lightly. Hello, Miss Quinn. Eva did not have time to be polite with her. As he walked into the office, he said anxiously, I saw Miles today. It really is Miles. Until now, Eva had not completely calmed down. When she talked about Miles, she could not help but feel nervous. Since she was in Baltimore, she must be able to find Strawberry. So this time Eva held great hope. She even felt that she was going to see Miles soon. The conclusion that Strawberry just got was that Miles was definitely not in Baltimore. Why is Miles here? These things were simply too fantasy. To be honest, Strawberry still trusted her more. She did not trust Eva much. After all, she was a professional so Eva had many uncontrollable subjective factors. Eva took out the painting that Roger gave her and pointed to the boy in the picture. This is Miles. According to his attire, help me find Miles. Mobi originally only had a 50% suspicion. After seeing the portrait, he had a 90% suspicion. After all, this little boy was wrapped up. This way, where did she find out that this little boy was Miles? Strawberry was afraid of stimulating Eva's mood, so she asked tactfully, Miss Quinn, is there a possibility that you are mistaken? I won't be mistaken. You have to believe in a mother's judgment of her son. Eva did not understand why everyone would ask her if she was mistaken. She was a mother. How could a mother mistake her child? Strawberry thought for a moment. What she said was not unreasonable. In the previous cases of finding people, there was also the matter of her mother finding her child with her own intuition. I will find the child according to this portrait. Miss Quinn, don't worry. Since Eva took the initiative to provide information, Strawberry also wanted to give it a try. Anyway, she was at a loss. Just as Eva left, Strawberry passed the portrait to Dexter. Dexter looked at the painting. This child's movements were upward, and it was obvious that there should be an adult holding the child. He felt strange. Wouldn't it be easier for an adult to find a child if he drew it? Why not? Dexter finally told Strawberry her thoughts. Originally, she was also curious about this painting. After his reminder, she immediately realized it. No wonder she felt that this painting was a little strange no matter how she looked at it. It turned out that there was a person missing. Strawberry did not stop for a moment and immediately dialed Eva's phone. Miss Quinn, is there another adult next to the child? In order to reduce the obstruction of the child, I still hope that Miss Quinn can draw the adult next to him. Eva also wanted to recall that adult, but she couldn't remember it. There wasn't even the outline of that adult in her mind. Where Miles appeared, how could Eva be willing to pay attention to other things? There was no other way. Eva could only look for Roger, hoping that he could find a way to help her think of that adult. Thus, the entire quiet city became noisy. Many forces were looking for a child at the same time. After searching for almost an entire day, Miles seemed to have disappeared from this city again. However, she still found many children dressed in similar clothes. However, after Eva's identification, she was sure that it was not Miles. Of course, she could not find Miles. The one who was most disappointed was Eva. After all, she held great hope. She thought that she would definitely be able to find Miles this time, but she did not expect this result. Dexter was also very strange. If the little boy that Eva saw was really Miles, so many people would definitely find him, but there was no news at all. Everyone did not give up. They continued to search for three days, but in the end, there was no trace of Miles. Even everyone who looked for suspected that the person they were looking for was no longer in this city. Everyone said this, 
but Eva refused to believe it and refused to give up. However, these three days of carpet search really needed a lot of money, resources, and energy. For the sake of interest, they could only shrink the scope of search. After Zack found out about Eva's persistence, he had no choice but to tell Eva about the last time he saw Miles in England. He hoped that Eva would give up on searching for him. However, Zack underestimated Eva's persistence. Even if you saw him in England a few days ago, he is very likely to be in the country right now. There is no connection between the two. Then according to what you said, he may not be in your city now. Instead, he might have gone to some other city. Zack followed Eva's words. Eva knew that Zack did not want her to do such a useless thing. After all, as long as she continued to search, Eva could not sleep every day. This was also a kind of burden for her body. Zack, don't say anymore. Give me three more days. If I still can't find Miles in three days, I believe he has gone somewhere else. This was the biggest concession Eva could make. Zack had no choice but to agree to Eva's request. The same thing had been happening in the entire city for the past few days, and that was someone had been holding a portrait that could not be seen and asking people on every street searching for them. In just a few short days, Eva had already become very thin. Roger really could not bear to see Eva torment himself like this, so he forcefully pulled her to the best western restaurant to replenish her nutrition. This woman was so thin that it made one's heart ache. Eva was fully focused on finding Miles, so he did not have any thoughts of eating. I don't want to eat. I'm not hungry, Roger. You are not hungry. Do you know how many days you have not eaten well? At that time, you will be carried to the ward by the doctor before Miles can be found. Roger was a little unhappy. In the past, when she was young, she did not like to eat much. Every time she would eat more because he had a dark face. Eva's gaze was not on Roger's face. She lowered her head and said gloomily, Roger, you know, if I can't find Miles one day, I can't eat a day. You know how sensible your Miles is. A willful mother like you will definitely give him a headache. It was the first time that Roger spoke to Eva so seriously. I believe that Miles also wants you to be healthy. When Eva heard this, she looked at the steak in front of her and withdrew her gaze. There was no other way she still had no appetite. If you don't like steak, we can eat other things. Roger saw that Eva's face had been dark. She thought about the last time she saw Miles in this restaurant. Would this affect Eva? So she wanted to take Eva to another restaurant. Eva pushed away the steak in front of her. Just smelling it made her feel nauseous. Roger, don't waste it. I really don't want to eat anything. I really want to vomit when I smell it. Roger put down the knife and fork in his hand and asked sternly with a dark face. Eva, let me ask you, have you had a good meal these past few days? The answer was no, otherwise it would be impossible for Eva to be so thin, and it was in a short time. Roger's expression was a little disappointed. I always thought you were a strong woman, but I didn't expect you to disappoint me so much. If you don't eat your fill, where do you find the strength to continue looking for miles? Eva's strained emotions finally collapsed. She looked at Roger with a pained expression. Roger, tell me, why did you tell me that Miles was clearly in this city, but there was no news at all? Miles loved me so much, and he knew that I was looking for him. Why did he just not come out? If he lost his memory and I found him, what kind of identity should I use? Would he believe me if I said it was his mother? Roger guessed. It's normal that we can't find Miles. If the person who saved Miles deliberately doesn't let us find him, it's understandable that we can't find him. Why did he do this? Doesn't he know that the best thing for a child is to grow up in front of his biological parents? Eva suddenly remembered what Sandra said. She said that she knew Miles' whereabouts. She was sure that she would go back to find her. Since Miles could survive in that situation, it meant that something must have happened during the explosion or before the explosion. Although Eva did not want to see Sandra again, for the sake of Miles, she had to ask that woman again. Roger, I now think of something that I must do immediately. I want to see someone right away. Right now, Eva only wanted to know where Miles was. He couldn't care about anything else. Roger stood up. Eva's expression was really worrying. I'll accompany you. It's not good for you to drive like this. No, that person only wants me to see her alone. Sandra said that she only wanted to see me. If you say so, is there any danger in seeing this person? Roger looked even more worried. After I see that person, I still want to see you. Eva was not in the mood to continue chatting with Roger. She just wanted to see Sandra as soon as possible. She hoped that Sandra's condition did not worsen. The words she said when she was awake were credible. She hoped that Sandra really knew the inside story and not just wanted to lie to her. This time, when she came to the mental hospital, Eva was much more haggard than last time. However, 
Sandra's mental appearance was getting better and better every day. This time, she saw that her skin was ruddy and shiny. It could be seen that she was in a good mood these days. Sandra looked at Eva with contempt and smiled maliciously. Sister, didn't you come to see me a few days ago? Why did you miss me again? Eva knew that Sandra was asking the obvious. Eva didn't want to beat around the bush with Sandra. I don't want to talk to you about this now. I want to ask you something. Chapter 268 Cho Jiawe Sandra obviously knew the purpose of Eva's visit, but seeing that Eva did not want to ask for her but had to beg her, Sandra was very happy now. Roger's words today reminded Eva. She also began to feel that something was wrong. There must be someone behind Miles. She did not know who this huge conspiracy was pointing to, but she was sure that she did not want her child to be used by others. Whose hand is Miles in now? Eva asked directly. I remember my sister said last time that Xiao Xiao is a crazy woman. Do you believe the words of a crazy woman? Sandra sneered. Eva was now completely suppressing her anger. Her patience was about to be used up by Sandra. Sandra, stop pretending to be crazy. Tell me where is Miles? I also remember that I said that as long as you can seriously listen to the story I told you, I will definitely tell you the whereabouts of Miles, but you just won't listen. Sandra smiled very contentedly, as if all this had nothing to do with her. I am willing to listen to your story, hurry up and tell it. Eva swore in her heart that no matter what Sandra said this time, she would not leave in anger, and she had to endure her nonsense for miles. Seeing that Eva had already agreed, Sandra pretended to cough a few times and said coquettishly, Sister, do you know that Zack can actually save Miles? But because of his hatred for Quinn family, so. Eva now only had Roger and Zack left, and Zack was basically all her reliance. She didn't want Sandra to provoke the relationship between her and Zack. She looked at Sandra angrily. Shut up, you can't say bad things about Zack. Eva did not believe that Zack would do this to her. You silly woman, you actually don't believe it. Not all men in the world love you. Zack does love you but he doesn't love your child. Moreover, it is your and Dexter's child. Sandra sneered. It seems that you don't understand Zack's hatred for Quinn family very well. It can only be said that you are protected by all the outstanding men. You are protected too well. Regarding Zack, Eva completely believed him. Sandra, you can't go back on your words. You said that you would only let me listen to the old story of the next generation. Don't drag Zack into it. I always thought that you were faking marriage. I didn't expect you to be so loyal. Since that's the case, I will tear the ugly face of the Quinn family apart. Your parents worked together to kill Zack's father, and you still have a clear conscience as his wife. Zack's mother must not know. Otherwise, she will definitely not want you to be her daughter-in-law. Sandra's face was a little ferocious. In fact, the Quinn and Stone were in a cooperative relationship back then. However, both men loved Eva's mother deeply. However, Eva's mother chose Patrick in the end. However, Zack's father still loved Eva's mother deeply. This made Patrick, a man who was good at being jealous, unable to bear it. Therefore, he silently planned how to destroy Stone. Finally, he found an opportunity. Zack's father could not bear the pressure and jumped off the building to commit suicide. However, even so, Patrick did not let Stone go. He even continued to beat down Stone. Eva's mother had always been a bystander in the process. She had never begged for mercy for Stone. Your mother is a bitch who is like gold and jade. She used Zack's father to like her and made use of his love to make him lose his life. Sandra laughed crazily. Sandra, I warn you not to continue to insult my mother. Eva said hatefully. She would not forget how her mother died. It was her father who died together with her. Now, she still had the face to mention her mother and also insulted her innocence. Eva really could not stand it. Sandra, do you know? I really want you to die. If Sandra was not mentally ill, she would have been punished by the law. How could she be so free and unfettered? My death is not good for you for the time being, unless you don't want to see Miles for the rest of your life. Sandra was not afraid at all. She knew that Eva would not do anything to her. After all, she loved her child so much. I have heard your stories. When will you tell me the whereabouts of Miles? Hurry up. Eva lost control of her emotions once again and shouted at Sandra. Sandra was a villain to begin with. She also cared about how others looked at her, so she went back on her words. Sister, in fact, what I want the most is for you to leave Zack immediately. If you can do it as soon as possible, I will definitely tell you. This time, I will definitely not go back on my words. In fact, the voice in Sandra's heart was even if I went back on my words. What can you do to me? Whether I really know the whereabouts of Miles or not, as long as you don't find Miles, you will always be threatened by me. 
Sandra, I knew I trusted you wrongly. You don't even know where Miles is. You are here to threaten me to do something for you. Eva had originally warned herself to be calm, but when facing Sandra, it was really difficult for her to calm down. She always had a way to arouse her disgust. When Sandra saw Eva turn around and was about to leave, her expression became a little flustered. She knew that if Eva left this time, she would never come again. She shouted loudly, Eva, wait for me. Eva turned around with a cold face. She looked at Sandra with a bone-chilling gaze. Right now, Sandra was just a clown in her eyes. As long as she did not accompany her to fool around, she would have no meaning. Eva, do you not want to see Miles for the rest of your life? Sandra asked loudly. Her heart was actually nervous. She was not sure if this condition could threaten Eva. I really want to know the whereabouts of Miles, but I am now sure that you do not know the whereabouts of Miles. You are just lonely. You want me to play with you? Dream on. Eva really couldn't stand Sandra and scolded. A whore like you who has done all kinds of bad things can continue to live in this cold place. I will never come again. When Sandra heard Eva say that she would never come, she was still a little scared. Eva, I have something to tell you. I know who took Miles away and is Dexter's enemy. If it wasn't for Dexter, you wouldn't have been separated from your son for so many years. It was all because of Dexter. Sandra knew that the relationship between Eva and Dexter could not be cut off, but she also knew that Dexter really liked Eva. As long as Eva hated Dexter forever, there would be no more possibility between them. The purpose of Sandra's existence was to destroy all of Eva's happiness. She was living such a miserable life. How could Eva, the initiator of evil, live so well? Whatever you say, I'll listen. Eva knew that Sandra was making his last struggle and smiled contemptuously. She was really stupid. She clearly knew how much Sandra hated her, but she still sent herself to her door for her to play with. She did not find Miles' whereabouts, and she even inexplicably heard a bunch of chaotic things. The second time Eva and Roger met today, Eva was even more irritated. After all, Sandra's line was also broken, so the chance to find Miles was even more slim. But Eva did not make any progress, but Roger found something new. Eva, I found a very interesting thing. What is it? There was light in Roger's eyes. Eva thought it must be something very interesting. I found someone who saw Miles in an abandoned factory. Although Roger had found this person, he did not have confidence when he said this. After all, he did not believe why Miles appeared in that place. Hurry up and take me to that abandoned factory. Eva did not care whether it was logical or not. She could not let go of the chance to find Miles. Eva, but I don't think Miles will appear in the abandoned factory. I am wondering if someone deliberately released false news to confuse our vision and hearing. Roger speculated reasonably. Even if there is danger, I still have to go. This is maternal love. Eva smiled faintly. Roger definitely could not let Eva take the risk alone. He had to go with him. In that case, let me go with you. I was wondering if Miles had been taken away by some enemy. If an ordinary family found Miles, it would definitely not be like this. It was because of this that Roger began to worry about Eva's safety. Your thoughts are the same as mine, so I am very worried about Miles' safety. He still has value so the enemy will not do anything to him. But who knows what will happen in the future? If they think that Miles is worthless, will it be detrimental to Miles? So I must find Miles as soon as possible. As long as Eva thought that Miles would disappear from this world again, her heart would be dull and painful. Don't worry, Eva. Miles won't be in any danger in the short term. I feel that the other party's game has only just begun. Roger voiced his speculation. What do you mean? Eva was a little apprehensive. Please believe in the intuition of a psychologist and a person who has been in the business world for a long time. To tell the truth, Roger did not know how to describe this feeling. He could only vaguely say that he hoped that Eva could believe it and was no longer afraid. Eva decided to believe in Roger. Her miles would definitely have good fortune after surviving a disaster. She also remembered what Sandra said at the end. He said that Dexter's enemy had taken Miles away. At most, she would have a grudge with Annabella and Sandra in her life. One of these two people died and the other was locked up in a mental hospital. If he really said that his enemy was Dexter, then it could only be